Uh, but we can have handbells, we can make music that way and do it in a safe way. So if you're interested in that, especially if you can read a little bit of music, that is always helpful. Um, talk to Brad uh, after the service, keeping a six foot dif dif distance, of course. I can tell this is gonna be an interesting service, I can't talk. Speaking of which, next Sunday we'll have a healing service. <laughs> How's that for a segue? Um, it'll be incorporating elements of healing afterwards outside. I will be glad to meet with anybody for prayers, again, keeping a safe distance and wearing masks. And on All Saints Sunday, which is November 1st, we are offering a service of holy baptism. So I'm delighted about some things beginning to spring to life. Uh, and thank you all for your patience. I want to give a big shout out to our vestry members. If you're a vestry member, raise your hand, please. Y'all, they have done so much work. So much work during the past eight months. A lot of it you have not seen. And a real big shout out to our video and sound people. Um, Thomas Saunders isn't with us, but you know they have kept us going. So thank you and a big shout out to them. So now if you will silence your hearts and your cell phones and listen to this meditation of the king of love my shepherd is. stand. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. 
cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Lord, we pray that your grace may always proceed and follow us, that we may continually be given to good works through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Philippians. My brothers and sisters, whom I love and long for, my joy and crown, stand firm in the Lord in this way, my beloved. I urge Iodia and I urge Sintichi to be of the same mind in the Lord. Yes, and I ask you also, my loyal companion, help these women, for they have struggled beside me in the work of the gospel, together with Clement and the rest of my co-workers, whose names are in the book of life. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, beloved, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable. If there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing the things that you have learned. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Once more Jesus spoke to them in parables, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who gave a wedding banquet for his son. He sent his slaves to call those who had been invited to the wedding banquet, but they would not come. Again he sent other slaves, saying, Tell those who have been invited, Look, I have prepared my dinner. My oxen and my fat calves have been slaughtered, and everything is ready. Come to the wedding banquet. But they made light of it and went away, one to his farm and another to his business, while the rest seized his slaves, mistreated them, and killed them. The king was enraged. He sent his troops, destroyed those murderers, and burned their city. Then he said to his slaves, the wedding is ready, but those invited were not worthy. Go, therefore, into the main streets and invite everyone you find to go to the wedding banquet. Those slaves went out into the streets and gathered all whom they found, both good and bad. So the wedding hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to see the guests, he noticed a man there who was not wearing a wedding robe. And he said to him, Friend, how did you get in here without a wedding robe? And he was speechless. Then the king said to the attendants, Bind him hand and foot and throw him into the outer darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are called, but few are chosen. The Gospel of the Lord. 
Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Today is Sunday, October 11th, and you know what that means. That means that somewhere out there, a radio station has begun playing 24-hour Christmas music, as one is wont to do. Now, at the risk of sounding like I'm an advocate for that sort of thing, and I am not, there is one piece of Christmas music that I want to share with you right now. So see if this sounds familiar, Brad. Okay, and that's as Christmassy as we're going to get in the Episcopal Church until December 24th. Okay, you probably recognized it. It's from the musical MAME, and you are going to hate me because that will be your earworm for the rest of the day. Uh, it's called We Need a Little Christmas. Now, a quick backstory to this song, if you're not familiar with the musical. This song is not sung during the Christmas season, so it's perfect for us right now. Instead, this musical number comes right after a series of devastating blows occur to the heroine, Mame. And the people around Mame expect her to sink into a pool of despair, just a pool of despair, but instead, she begins to sing the song you just heard. She says, haul out the holly, Put up the tree before my spirit falls again. Fill up the stocking. I may be rushing things, but deck the halls again now. For we need a little Christmas right this very minute. Candles in the window, carols at the spinet. Yes, we need a little Christmas right this very minute. It has a snowed a single flurry, but Santa dear, we're in a hurry. Mm-hmm. Now, I am not asking that we celebrate Christmas today, but I do want us to capture the spirit of that song, that there is a time to sing and throw a party, and usually it's when you least feel like it, like a lot of us do right now. I so, so wish that we could throw a great big party, but we can't, not just yet. Today's smaller, it's a little bit of a quieter party, but beloved, it is still a party. We have each other. We have our God. We have communion. And thanks be to God, we have Cheetos. So everything is possible these days. Now think back to some of the best gatherings you've ever had. A lot of times, there's no excuse for getting together. It just happens. They're thrown for no other reason than that the host or hostess loves a good time and wants to create a good time, wants to share that with their friends and family. I know a lot of that's virtual these days, but think back on those occasions. And when we do that, when we throw that kind of party, we're only imitating our God, God who loves to throw parties for the people of God. In fact, one way of describing the creation story is to see it as a party that God has chosen to throw so we can get in on some of God's bounty and begin to know the joy of being party givers ourselves. John Poole, Claypool put it this way, there was no emptiness in God that needed to be filled. There was rather a bottomless fullness, a bottomless fullness that God wanted to share. 
And it's the goodness of life that God wants to share. And actually, we hear it most clearly in the parable of the wedding banquet that Jesus tells us today. Although, granted, it is goodness with an edge. A wedding feast is to be held, and the host has done all he can to create a setting for joy. But instead of joy, indifference becomes the garment of choice for the guest. They don't show up. They don't show up. And the first reaction of the party giver is anger. Anger. Now much has been made of the wrath of God as if it is something different from the love of God. But beloved, I remind you, the opposite of love is not anger. It's not anger. It's indifference. Indifference. We never get angry about something to which we are indifferent. God is not indifferent to God's people. It angers God when people misuse their freedom and make foolish choices, when they turn down the free meal that is theirs for the asking. And that's the edge to this story. With all of his heart, God wants us to come to this party of joy. But at the same time, it's possible to miss out on the party altogether. And why is that? Why? Because you and I are ultimately free. We have free will, which is the first great gift of creation. We are the only ones who can sense that God's spirit of delighting and blessing is the essence of reality. We're the only ones who can decide to embrace that spirit and begin to embody it or not. That's our choice. And if we say no, and a lot of us do in a lot of ways every day, if we say no, God does not take his toys and go home. His home, his house, just like this church, continues to be open to anyone who wants to come to the party. It's open. And the party giver goes out to search for other guests to come for the celebration. And as you heard in that parable, they come. But then the story Jesus tells takes on an unexpected twist when one guest is thrown out by the host for not wearing the proper dress. How in the world was the guest supposed to know there was a dress code? Now, I have always thought this part of the story was unfair, deeply unfair, until I dug deeper into what Jesus was saying here. We used to have a sign at the entrance to this church that had a picture of a pair of sandals, and it said, it's okay to dress casual for church. Jesus did. So I'm not wearing sandals today. I am wearing very comfortable tennis shoes. It's okay to come casual to church. Jesus did. And it's okay to come as you are. But beloved, it is not okay to stay as you are. It is true that God loves us just the way we are, but it is also true that God loves us too much to leave us the way we are. Becoming part of the body of Christ means changing. Come to the feast as you are, but if you stay, consider dressing up a little. Putting on the garment of faith instead of always dressing up in doubt. Doubt is actually one of my favorite articles of clothing. But every so, every so often, Jesus wumps me up the side of the head and says, put on faith today. Put on faith. It's putting on the garment of faith. Instead of always dressing up in doubt, it's putting on love, even when we are put off by others. Anybody here put off by others these days? Anybody here put off by other people's behavior? Put on love. Put on love. And we usually do that by starting small, making changes from the inside out, simple things, important things, like considering the needs of others first 
and realizing we are not the center of the universe. I am shocked by that every single day. I am not the center of the universe, and neither are you. Jesus is. Now, this part is for our kids. Now, usually we have refreshments after the service, and we have lots of goodies. But could you imagine Jesus pushing and shoving to get Cheetos after the service? Now, I have a great imagination, but somehow I cannot see Jesus doing that. I can see Jesus making sure that there's enough for everybody. After all, this is the Lord who took a gift of food from a small child and multiplied it so that there was enough to go around and feed 5,000 people. Something simple, something loving, done as Jesus would do. And then a change happens. Bit by bit, we learn to become imitators of Christ because our destiny is to become like Jesus. C.S. Lewis used to say that we're to become little Christ, clothing ourselves in faith, hope, and love, and imitating our host by putting on the garment of generosity. Generosity. Now, when I say that word, your mind probably turns to money, especially as this is stewardship season. But, beloved, it is more than that, much more, especially now. Generosity of spirit is desperately, desperately needed right now. You and I, as little Christ, need to act like it and show that spirit of generosity to those with whom we disagree, to those who look or act differently than we do, and maybe really important right now, to those who may vote differently than we do. That's why people play Christmas music out of season. They're trying to reclaim the spirit of the season. And you and I know that the Holy Spirit of God is available in season and out of season to inspire and to change us especially during times like these. So it's okay to say we need a little Christmas right this very minute. Everyone does. So, beloved, how will you spread the message of light and life and hope and love? How will you put on Christ so that all may see Jesus in you? Amen. Hit it, Brad. Can you dance? And high kick with a bad knee. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again. In accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. 
We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and for the life of the world to come. Amen. In peace we pray to you, Lord God, for all people in their daily life and work, for our families, friends, and neighbors, and for those who are alone, for this community, the nation, and the world, for all who work for justice, freedom, and peace, for the just and proper use of your creation, for the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression, for all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble, for those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy, for the peace and unity of the Church of God, for all who proclaim the gospel and all who seek the truth, for Michael, our presiding bishop, and Frank, our bishop, and all bishops and other ministers, for all who serve God in his church, for the special needs and concerns of this congregation, for those in need of healing, President and Mrs. Trump, Carol Kane, Janet Bird, John Howell, Linda Bauscher, and Virginia Veal. For those suffering from COVID-19 and for the development of a vaccine. For all who are in harm's way from the West Coast wildfires. For those who are homebound. For the safety of Joseph Hadall and all those who serve abroad. For Abby Brooks as she completes basic training for the Navy. Hear us, Lord, for your mercy is great. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. For those celebrating birthdays, Joe Rombaugh, Ella Frazier, Lauren Waldo, and Tony Abate. For those celebrating anniversaries, for our partnership with Martinez Elementary School and the Claiborne of Westlake. We exalt you, O God, our King, and praise your name forever and ever. We pray for all who have died that they may find a place in their eternal kingdom. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them who put their trust in you. We pray to you also for the forgiveness of our sins. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown things done and left undone, and so uphold us by your spirit that we may live and serve you in newness of life to the honor and glory of your name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy keep you in eternal life. Um, we moved here about a year and a half ago and have been attending this church regularly for about a year. A lot of times I hear all of you joke about how visitors just keep coming for Cheetos. And for us it's kind of, kind of true, but not really for the Cheetos. Um, but really we stayed for the fellowship that we found during that snack time uh, that we didn't find in any other churches that we visited. Um, so for those of you who may be visiting or tuning in online for the first time today. I hope you feel welcomed and seen, even though snack time is currently on hiatus. Um, but we kept coming back to online services during this time because we felt known and seen by the people in this church. We kept signing in because we wanted to get to know the people here. And we kept watching virtually because we could see that the people here were continuing to serve the needs of this community. Having regular church services during a time when nothing is regular has been grounding and important for us and we're grateful to be able to continue to give during this time as a grounding way to participate with this community of believers. Um, as we enter into a time of returning to in-person worship and look for ways to keep this season, I know that you'll listen to the ways that you're called by God to participate in the life of this congregation uh, with your time, your talents, and your gifts.
Thomas, you did very well. All by himself, better than I would. I feel like I'm part of Grey's Anatomy right now, which I've never seen. <laughs> There's still Netflix. The doctor is in. Please stand. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who on the first day of the week overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection, open to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ is died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, 
and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. My beloved, the gifts of God for the people of God. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. You have fed us with spiritual food and the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart, through Christ our Lord. Amen. My beloved, always remember how short life is and how little time we have to gladden the hearts of those who travel with us. So be quick to love, make haste to be kind, and the rich and abundant blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. And by the way, we do have Cheetos for the kids as they go out. And now this is when I need my children to help. Beloved, go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.